Hey everybody, it's uh, Eugene Lee Show here, and today I'm going to do a, just a quick summary or review of the Ferro Freestyle 2. And about, I don't know, maybe a few years ago, I did a summary on the Freestyle 1, or the very first one that Ferro put out. And it was pretty novel back then, and, and um, I found it kind of interesting, you know, as a handheld scanner. But um, they've made some improvements, and so I thought I'd just go through um, and just show you the basics here. Nothing uh, fancy or nothing too major. So uh, what I have in front of me right now is the actual scanning unit itself. I've got a phone here. I've got a small little uh, drive or hard drive that I can transfer data to. And I've got the PC. So this PC hooks into the scanner and I'll actually show you what it looks like when it comes all together. But let me go through the individual components uh, more thoroughly here. So starting with the PC here, so you need this in order to uh, scan. So there's a little connector up here and this little connector, let me just grab the cable here. And this is the, the cable that plugs into the, the freestyle unit here. Okay, so you put that in there and that connects. So you'll have one cable going here. In fact, let me just put it this way so you get the idea. And this, there we go. So that's hooked in. Uh, there's a little button here to start and stop the PC. And on the back side here, there's a charging port and there's a USB ports. And these USB ports allow you to transfer data into the external drive once you get a whole bunch of projects set up. Uh, there is uh, actually a little uh, holder here and there's a couple of things here where you can put like a shoulder strap or a belt strap if you want. It's not all that heavy. Uh, it's really the battery here if I pull this out. Okay, that's just a battery like this. Okay, and you get the idea. Okay, so, all right, and you can charge directly from, uh, charge the battery directly from the unit. Uh, the phone is just a regular phone. It has a Faro app in it, and that will plug into the uh, hand unit here. Um, so I can try to fire that up after uh, on the actual hand unit. So it's got the handle here, and if you look at it from the front, you'll see that on the outsides here and here, these are infrared projectors, uh, so excuse me, infrared cameras. So this one here and this one here are looking at the infrared pattern that's being projected from the projector down here. And up here, you'll see there's some little LED, so that's for flash and gives you some additional lighting. And this is a camera, so this picks up the color and this will help with tracking as well. On the back, there's uh, some buttons here, the two that you use here. This one in the middle, once it's fired up, will get you um, started scanning. This is for flash, and uh, this one uh, is uh, for uh, what's called anchor points. And I'm not really gonna go through that, but uh, it's a feature that you can use for like hitting a corner of a wall or something like that, and using it as almost like a target or a reference marker. So um, that's the basics here. Uh, for how this comes together and uh, what I'll do is I'll just assemble this very quickly so you see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just hitting the button here to start up the PC. I'll let that go and then I've got the phone here so I'm gonna to have to log in here so let me just pull this away for a second I'll make sure I get in here and I've got a password I need to put in so let me just get that input all right and there is a uh, there's a Faro app here so I'm just gonna click on that and that'll kick in uh, one of the things that I'll need to do is tell it that I want to tether this with the USB that's here. And you can see where I plugged in the phone, it's just underneath the unit here. And so if I give it a second, it'll probably fire up. But what I may need to do is turn on, let me see here. I'm gonna turn on, go to the settings and turn on the uh, USB tethering. So let me do that in just a second, like that. So turn that on, let me go back to this and this should kick in eventually. All right, just give it a sec here, there we go. So I won't take the time to go through all the uh, options here on the app, but it's pretty simple. This is the start stop. Um, there's some uh, tools here for calibration and for white balance. White balance is probably more important uh, just to get your colors right. And then there's also, if you go here, oops, 
if you go back over here on the settings, you can set up the project and scan names and all that sort of thing. So uh, this is sort of where you control everything. And uh, if you go back to the home, uh, well, that's for setting up a project. So go back to the home. Um, this is just for your flash off and on. And uh, I had it on for most of the scanning. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I've set up a, a small mock crime scene. I've got a dummy body on the ground and I'm gonna scan it and then I'll just process the scans and we'll see how it goes. So in terms of data processing, when you transfer the project, uh, it, it actually is a project file in Pharaoh Scene. So I just have to double click on the um, file that it creates and it just opens up in Pharaoh Scene normally. So there's no other sort of setup or anything else. It just kind of comes in, which is kind of nice. And um, if we want to look and see what that looks like, now, I have already processed this scan, so I'm just going to bring up an older revision. Uh, this is what it looks like when you first come in, and you'll see that there's some mismatches on the data, you know, so it's a quick, um, quick assembly of the data. So they haven't actually processed it or filtered anything. And you can see there's a bunch of stray points that um, it tends to pick up uh, off of reflections and that sort of thing. So um, basically, you just process this really easy by going to the processing tab. Just go process scans. Now I only did one big scan. I didn't do a whole bunch, so I don't have to register anything. And I'm just going to pick this scan or the folder and I'm going to configure the processing. I'm just going to use the defaults right now, uh, whatever is here, and I'm just going to go start processing. And this will just take a minute and then it will uh, complete. So we'll come back when that's over. All right, so it's finished processing, and you can see that there's these reference markers. Now, I've actually shut off the uh, the visibility of these markers, but these actually help it to register the different frames together. And also, if you do multiple scans, uh, this will be super useful. The calibration plate can also be used for the white balancing. I think that's the most important thing. Otherwise, the color goes kind of funny um, if you don't have it set up properly. And you'll see here, I've got a cartridge case here. So even when we get down to small sizes, it's pretty good. Now, it did have problems with black, uh, this shiny black part here on the uh, evidence marker, but that's typical. You're going to get that uh, anyway. And you have to make sure always to fill in these little gaps. So when you're scanning, you know, make sure uh, you, you fill these in. I, I didn't bother. I mean, I did pretty good under here, so it tended to get pretty good data. And uh, you'll see like where I have the knife over here that picked that up pretty well. The mallet, it got quite well. So you're always looking to fill in the gaps uh, where these things are located. Now, the other thing that I think was uh, pretty simple and pretty easy to do was to get uh, all these areas up here. And I thought that could be a really great use for the, the freestyle too, like especially when you get a lot of you know, occluded areas because there's all the all kinds of different stuff in the way. If you tried to do this with a terrestrial laser scanner, it would be kind of difficult because you got to sort of get into all the blind spots. But with the hand scanner, it's just so easy. You just move it around. And, uh, it, you know, I wasn't really trying to get all of this. I just just kind of moved it around and it picked up quite a bit. So that's a really good, uh, that's a really good plus uh, when you're dealing with the, the hand scanner. Other than that, I mean, the data set is pretty good. Uh, I, I liked how the project came in. It processed really simple. I didn't have to do anything. This is just the default settings. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, for a lot of people, this is a, a really good, um, use for the technology and you know something like this you could use for bloodstain patterns you could use it for bullet trajectories um you know scanning vehicles or whatever but anyway this is just a quick sort of look at the freestyle uh not too too in depth but it kind of gives you an idea of what to expect in terms of the data the processing and the scanning as well thanks everyone Bye bye